All right. Wrong button. All right, uh, welcome to the uh, April monitoring team uh, functional update. Uh, my name is Ben Kochi, I'm the team lead. Uh, we have a good team of people working on uh, monitoring features. Um, we mostly cover uh, Prometheus monitoring at this time, but we're working on tracing and logging support uh, within GitLab uh, and gitlab.com. Uh, the problem we're having right now is we have a very small team uh, and uh, it requires a large amount of knowledge and we've had uh, 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 some setbacks in our our our, uh, our output because of uh, the uh, the lack of resources so uh, we're very interested in getting uh, referrals and other um, other sources of back-end engineering time to continue uh, uh, delivering our pro uh, our features. Uh, so we have two, two open headcount uh, for for candidates, and uh, we're trying to um, uh, reduce the scope of some of our 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 feature changes in order to get, get things done in, in a uh, faster way. Uh, so. Uh, 10.7, 10, 7. 10, 7, uh, we, we did some good stuff. Um, uh, we had uh, some improvements to the uh, dashboard so that we can see more information about the, uh, uh, the pods and the deployments in, in uh, people's uh, jobs. Um, uh, we also, in 10.8, uh, we're starting to work on uh, SLO alerting. So basically the idea is we're going to be adding the ability to create Prometheus alerts within uh, the GitLab user interface. This will be super fantastic because creating alerts can be a little difficult because you have to start to learn Prometheus query language. So we're going to provide a basic interface that will let you uh, uh, create new alerts with minimal uh, need to understand the Prometheus query language. Um, and then we'll be able, we're including the Prometheus Alert Manager to uh, route those alerts to, to users by email uh, as our first iteration. And we'll hopefully be able to get to other integrations uh, uh, as time goes on. Uh, we're also going to start uh, working toward the idea that we'll, you'll be able to see your production logs from within GitLab. So if you have uh, a Kubernetes cluster attached to your, your GitLab uh, service, uh, uh, our first iteration of this is we're going to start showing uh, the the names and then we'll be bringing uh, we're laying the foundation to bring the logs uh, Kubernetes uh, pod logs into the Prometheus into the GitLab UI. Uh, we've done a bunch of work and uh, to, to continue to stabilize the uh, uh, the Ruby client, uh, and it's been deployed in production. Uh, we didn't quite get it de uh, deployed by default in, in 10.7, so we're moving that to 10.8. Uh, uh, Prometheus in production has been uh, a, quite a lot of our work recently. Uh, we've been building uh, the upstream Prometheus node exporter, uh, and it's uh, had a lot of new features, a lot of uh, great contributions from the community. Uh, I'd love to thank the, all of the Prometheus contributors upstream for all the uh, great features that we've been adding. Um, uh, some of the important things you'll see linked in the slide deck, um, uh, uh, biggest ones being we've, we now have NFS server metrics and we fixed the NFS client metrics so that uh, uh, all the GitLab NFS servers can be properly monitored. Um, and we've also started doing some cool stuff. I'll show this uh, link after uh, the presentation that we've now have some really great uh, SLO SLA graphs uh, within uh, for GitLab.com, and that's pretty much it. We'll go to questions, and I can do a quick demo of uh, the dashboard. So if we bring up the uh, monitor.gitlab, uh, and we'll take a look at the uh, the Rails dashboard. And so you have, we have this new thing where we can see uh, uh, the error rate, which is um, if we go back to the basics of what makes good alerting in Prometheus, um, uh, we think about the, uh, 
the reliability of a site in terms of how many errors are we producing and how fast is it. So the um, th this is this is called the uh, the red method of alerting, and so we can see uh, very easily on here uh, the error rates. So we we actually have a, a real uh, a real goal of of uh, ninety nine point nine percent, which would be no more than 0.1 percent errors. But we're we're still working on improving the reliability of GitLab.com, so we're we're not quite going to reach that. So we set a ninety nine percent availability uh, kind of threshold line here, and at, and as we improve the reliability of GitLab.com, uh, we'll be able to to crank that bar down lower. Um, and then same thing goes for uh, for latency. We can see uh, that the that the 50th, the average latency, the percent, 50th percentile, and the 95th percentile latency uh, is is not great, but not terrible. Um, we have quite a lot of variation and uh, in in web latency, and that's that's the um, how fast the the site is responding for every request. Uh, so. Let me bring up the chat and see if I have any questions. Uh, yes, more automation is great. Um, uh, a lot of this is uh, uh, going to make it much easier for, for developers to see their products within uh, GitLab. Uh, Joshua says, uh, yep, we're working on uh, production ready metrics. Um, Yep. Uh, so, John, uh, more uh, more users are trying to 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 get to the Git, uh, Prometheus server in GitLab, uh, and we're 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 slowly working on coming up with uh, these kind of reliability queries for users. Uh, Kathy, uh, so yeah, uh, natural language processing could be interesting. Uh, we actually. Uh, if you look at these queries, they're actually pretty natural as they are. Um, uh, if we take, if we actually look at what the query is, um, uh, uh, the Prometheus query language uh, overall is actually quite simple. Um, so if we look at this. Uh, we can see that the uh, we're asking for the Rails completed requests, and we're simply taking the rate of the completed requests and divided that have a 500 code, and dividing that by the completed requests that have a 200 or 500 code. So it's it's not quite uh, a natural language processing, but it is a fairly intuitive uh, uh, language for querying data from the database. Um, as far as uh, are we going to increase the reliability at a fixed rate? Uh, that's up to the production team and and the develop and the development teams. Uh, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. Uh, that's definitely a question for our our production uh, implementation team. Yep. Any other questions? Yes, but I'm uh, not as quick as uh, to type. Uh, I just ask it. Uh, so you just include the 200s and 500s here. Uh, is this the industry standard, or why uh, don't you include like 400s and stuff like that? I mean, uh, we could pimp our uh, reliability artificially, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that that was that was part of the question that we uh, when when we were composing this dashboard was we said, do we want to include? Uh, 300 redirects and four, 400 messages. And we said, no, we're, we really want to know how many, uh, like we didn't, want, we didn't want a pad. Like, so it's pretty easy. I could just go here and just say, or th uh, we could just replace this and say all. Uh, and you can see our, our actual error rate uh, should drop. Uh, because a lot, quite a lot of requests that we have, which I think we can simply add all statuses together. And that should drop if the graph refreshes. It dropped a little bit. Yeah, it dropped a little bit, but 
Yeah. Uh, most of our most of our redirects, I think, are happening at the HA proxy layer. So um, maybe it would be better just to include all. I was assuming that it would be drowned out by redirects, but it's probably okay to include them. Yeah. Yeah, that's and of course that's one of the nice things about the, the Prometheus query language here is that it's quite easy to just experiment and change and play with this data. Um, uh, feasible to get monitoring info for clients so we could uh, find out about performance model. Uh, uh, are you talking about the client view? Ah, you're t you want to get metrics from GitLab users. Um, that's a good question. Uh, we would, this, that's something I think we would want to go through our, uh, our sales and developer relations and ask for access to their Prometheus metrics. So we could, we could totally ask uh, uh, different organizations who are using uh, Prometheus publicly like, uh, like Debian and see if we could get uh, access to their Prometheus servers. Um, or if they would, or if they could uh, use one of the remote write streaming options to s send us a copy of the data, uh, and yeah, I think that would be super uh, amazing to 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 collaborate with some of these some of our customers to get access to their data. Um, we had one idea uh, a while back that we wanted to um, uh, uh, provide uh, a monitoring hosted service and basically provide an auto support system that would allow uh, customers to just click a button and all of their metrics would get streamed into a GitLab service uh, and we could, uh, we could give our support access to that. Um, I think there's some open issues there for that. Some, uh, um, uh, but that's, but uh, like I said, uh, we have only one backend engineer on on the Prometheus uh, monitor uh, on the monitoring team, so these kind of features would require significantly more staffing uh, to be able to add like uh, uh, auto mon auto monitoring as a service for all and any GitLab user that wants any like any GitLab enterprise user that wants it. So, but hey Ben, can I give a uh, a bit of the broader picture? Sure. So what's happening right now is that um, we are gathering metrics from GitLab.com. Then there's some metrics in GitLab, but not a lot. Um, we really like Grafana, and, and Josh already said we're going to sh probably ship that with GitLab. And then it's really hard for people at our customer sites to access these metrics because they're only in the admin panel. So what we're going to what we're going to do, and that's the issue I linked for one four one six. We're going to expose the metrics by default to all users of an instance, so not just to the admins. So you don't have to be an admin anymore to log in. Because, for example, I can view the metrics that are coming off of GitLab.com by default because I'm not an admin. I'm not like logged in. I shouldn't have those credentials. But it's interesting to view the metrics. So everyone in the company, in the organization, has access to them. This way, they're also much easier to access for our support engineers. They won't be streamed to us, but as long as they look with the client, eh, if, as long as they're with someone that has a login on the instance, or even not, as long as they can access the instance, they can see it. And then what we want to do, instead of us making a performance of GitLab.net, which is awesome, but which only we profit from, and not all our customers, we should start dogfooding. We should start using those metrics that we ship with GitLab by default, because our customers also need to see everything to diagnose their things. There shouldn't be this big rift between it. And that's not gonna be easy because we're running a 100x the scale of our customers, but I, can, I think we can get a long way. And the worst thing is we ship some metrics that our customers have no use for or that are not populated, which is not the end of the world. So that, that is the vision have them on a on a like a path of of the the server have them accessible by all users of that server and maybe even to anonymous people and uh, make sure that we're using that ourselves and that that's the best version so that everyone's looking on the same page and, and everyone profits 
Yeah, it would be great if we if if we were able to completely dog food all of the uh, uh, the the dashboards that we use in GitLab.com for for end users. Um, I think status.gitlab.com is not a Prometheus backended system. Uh, I believe that's actually coming from like uh, uh, some other service. Um, that's that's correct. That's correct, Ben. It's not, and I think we've we've had this discussion about using you know Grafana to replace it with Prometheus. But I think if we had a status page that was bundled with the product, that would be ideal because then we would just use the same thing that our customers use for determining kind of what's the health of GitLab. Of course, the fact that we are more distributed than most of our customers is a challenge here. But um, if we could just have all the metrics centralized in Prometheus and come up with a central status page, I think this would be amazing. Yeah, and and uh, Gregory uh, says, are we we're going to re-implement all of Grafana? And I I, I really hope not. Uh, I'm trying to uh, to keep our our dashboard and graph implementations as simple as possible uh, because re-implementing Grafana is a huge amount of work, and I I don't think we want to we don't want to get into that. Um, uh, one of the ideas was we, you know, we could just bundle Grafana with Omnibus, but that is yet another really big tool um, uh, to ship with uh, with every customer. So possibly um, this is this gets into one of those situations where, uh, like, the the how much how much extra stuff do we have to bring in to to support this? Right. Yeah, there were some comments here about status page, and this is something that a lot of people use for their customers. I think also you have the needs of your customers that use your product is a bit different than your operations team. So, um, you know, if we had something similar to status page that had Prometheus as the back end, it would be really cool to have something like that for uh, like a holistic view of like what the health of GitLab is. Yeah. Any questions?